Hey everybody, Hunter Fisher, Trapper Trader, Guide Scout and Interpreter, and just a country cook, Steve Hall, here in Nashville, Tennessee, along with Pretty Miss Sheila running that camera. Hi, Sheila. Hi. Today we're going to make Memphis-style barbecued bologna. It is to die for. We got us a big five-pound chub of bologna. We've already cut the little round caps off of each end of this rascal so we can square it up, but we're going to do it different. The reason we say Memphis-style is because there's a restaurant down in the Memphis area that does it completely different than anybody else. Most people that do a barbecued or smoked bologna, they rub it like with mustard or brown sugar and soy sauce stuff and then they smoke it and then they slice it and, and it's great. They, those are good recipes, don't get me wrong. But we're going to do something completely different. Come on over here, let's get started. Well, like I said, we already chopped the little end caps off our bologna to kind of square it up and the reason we want to do that it's because we want it to fit perfectly in this little loaf pan with a brine that we're going to put it in the refrigerator and turn it a quarter a turn every now and then all night long. But let's start with our brine. Now that we got our pan heating up, we're going to start out with some bacon grease in here. And I got to show you something while that's kind of melting, heating up. Get you one of these. Sheila got me this. It's got a neat little strainer in the top and when you're done cooking bacon in the morning, pour it in there after it cools down safely. It'll put all that beautiful bacon grease down in there. It turns nice and white in the refrigerator. And man, you can use it for all your cooking stuff like this recipe right here. We're also going to need a half a cup of diced red onions and we'll get them going here. And what we're making is we're, this part is just for a brine to soak this little chub in as soon as we get it made up and put in there. And we'll probably put it in there while it's still fairly warm and kind of turn it a little bit and then let it cool and it'll pull all the goodies in there. Now we're going to also put in two tablespoons or actually a big rounded tablespoon of brown sugar. We'll call that two tablespoons. Now we're going to put in a tablespoon of ginger and I love these little squeeze bottles of ginger and garlic minced already ready. Makes it so convenient. I know you can do fresh but I like to do it this way because it makes it so much quicker and easier. Especially if you're doing a brine I don't think it makes that big of a difference. We got our ginger root in there and we're going to put in one tablespoon of garlic minced garlic and it's time to turn my little burner down. I always kick it up on medium high to get it rocking and rolling and it's getting away a little bit. We're going to put in a tablespoon of apple cider vinegar in there. Oh it's getting good. We're going to put in a half a cup of ketchup. Right there we're already turning the corner from mustard to ketchup based but trust me on this. And we're going to put in one teaspoon of thyme in there. Gives it such good flavor. And I think our little cups are all stacked up here. We got all them in. So that tells me it's time for another ingredient in just a minute. I'm going to soften these onions just a little bit and I'll be right back with you. Boy, this sauce smells just absolutely wonderful. Now we're going to put in a little beer in here. Put it in a little at a time so I don't quite lower the temperature on this. And we're only going to need about a half a bottle of beer in this. And I'll do it about right there. We're going to let this simmer for just a couple of minutes and we'll be right back. All right. And of course, just about a half a teaspoon of salt, maybe not even that much, just a dash of salt. I like pepper, so I would say a good teaspoon of pepper in there. Now you can add hot sauce to this if you want, but we're going for that barbecue flavor and that Memphis style. We kind of borrowed this from a restaurant down there, so to speak. Let me go ahead and turn this off. 
perfect. Now we're going to move this to our loaf pan, which is perfect for what we want to do. Let me shove my little burner off to the side here and get him off the beaten path. It's the perfect amount for that. Now we're going to set this over here for just a second and let's grab our star attraction over here. Unskin this baloney here, take the little wrapper off. And we are going to go with the conventional cuts that pretty much everybody does. And if you haven't made fried bologna or smoked bologna, or in this case barbecue bologna, you just put a cut down about a quarter of an inch at an angle, about every inch and a half or so. Not real deep, just enough to let this marinade soak in there. And once you get all the way around on here, like I say, about every inch and a half or so, there's our last cut. Then we're going to cut it the other direction, the same thing, about every inch and a half. And those will all open up as it's cooking and let a lot of that stuff soak in there. Our little crisscrosses. I know they're probably hard to see on camera, but trust me, they're there. You got to kind of look where you started to see where you need to end up. I think I might have come pretty close. Doesn't hurt to have an. There's my next cut. Perfect. Now we're going to set our hot little brine in here and gently lay this thing in here and we're going to turn it. You get a couple of forks here. We're gently going to turn this thing in this brine a few times just to kind of get it started. Oh boy that smells so wonderful. And what we're going to do now is we're going to set this in the refrigerator and about every, I don't know, whenever you happen to poke your head in the door, just give it about a quarter of a turn. A couple, three hours later, if you remember, go by, give it another quarter of a turn and do that till about this time tomorrow. Let's pop it in the refrigerator. Well, it's been 24 hours in the refrigerator and boy, it's been tough waiting because every time you go in and give it a little bit of a turn, you taste that stuff that's on there. It's outstanding. Come on over and take a close look at this. Well, this is the difference between the recipes where you just rub it down with mustard and stuff and pop it on the grill. This has been marinating for 24 hours. We couldn't be more tickled. Now we're going to take this little brush and we're going to dip the little goodies that are in the side and take the rest of this marinade and brush it on from time to time. But right now it's heading for the grill. I've got my grill going down in there good. I got a little drip pan down there. And look what I did. Instead of cleaning my grill all the time, I took one of these little grill mats right here. Let me see if I can point at this rascal right there. See it? You get a couple of those big grill mats that are real big when you buy them. So I took a pair of scissors and I just cut one big enough for this to sit on and I'll keep that in the future for doing this. That way, all the smoke can get up around it. And this is that same chunky, delicious, full of onions, full of garlic, full of all kinds of goodies that I'm going to put on top from time to time as this opens up. And let's get it going for about an hour and a half to two hours. We'll see you in a little bit. Well, it's only been in here 30 minutes. The sun's going down, so I've got my little flashlight out. I think I'm going to have to replace the batteries on it. But look at the slits, how they're opening up. And it's only been 30 minutes. And I got the grill at 250 degrees. I forgot to mention that a little earlier. Put a little of this sauce on the ends, too. Boy, that looks great. 
I love the little chunks of onion and garlic that are actually right in the marinade yet. And again, the difference between this rascal and the mustard rubbed ones is we actually cooked the marinade in a pan, used ketchup, and then we sat it in the refrigerator all night long, turning it about a quarter to a third of a turn every few hours. And it's just dying to get a little more heat on it. So we'll be back in a bit. It's only been another 15 minutes. But right now it's time for these little babies right here. This is my jar of applewood pellets. And I just dump them down the side. The pretty little birds singing along with us here. And as they roll up against them coals, it won't take long and that smoke will be coming up out of there. So it's time to add some good smoke to this. I like to kind of get it cooking for the first half hour and let them cracks all open up a little bit then put the smoke to it. So we'll give it five minutes and see how them pellets are doing. Well, that didn't take very long. Them little applewood pellets are really putting out the smoke big time getting down in all them little cracks and stuff and with that marinade on there it's just sticking to it big time. Looking good. It's been about 45 minutes and I just hate for any part of this not to get in on the party. So I gotta lay my flashlight down just for a second. I'm gonna take these two forks and I'm going to turn him over a little bit. There we go. Because that poor little part right there didn't get to get juiced up. we got to let him get his little part in there because he's up against that little baby grill mat down there. So. Man, the rest of this marinade is just perfect for putting on there. Can you smell it? Because I sure can. Wow, that stuff is just absolutely terrific. All right, let's give her about another 45 minutes and we'll see what she looks like. Well, it's been an hour and a half. And looky here. This looks absolutely delicious. I think it's time to slice some pieces off and bring them back out here and pop them on the grill. So let's take this inside. Man, this is almost too pretty to cut into. Wow, that is beautiful. And I'm slicing this about how thick I want these to be on a hamburger bun. Some I'll do a little thinner Wow. Get this all sliced up here. We're going to do one more little twist with this thing. This marinade is so good. I'm thinking about doing a couple of them with the marinade and doing a couple of them these bigger pieces like this here, I'm going to go ahead and cut them into chunks for appetizers like this. I'll show you that in a little bit. But let me get these out on the grill and sear them up a little bit. And I'm going to hit them a couple of them with our favorite barbecue sauce, our secret barbecue sauce, which is on this channel. In fact, I'm going to put it at the end of this recipe. So let's get these on the grill. See if I can do this with the flashlight. Down here in Tennessee, it gets a little warm, so you got to kind of shoot some of your recipes right in the evening. And then by the time I get all the goodies on there and all that kind of stuff, let me move these over here a little bit closer. You can see them in the camera shot better. Behave yourself now. Don't you fight me. And like I said, I'm going to do two of these with that marinade 
that I just really like. Oh, and then you know me, it's time for a little of our rich barbecue sauce. You've got to check that out on our channel. Top secret barbecue sauce, not secret anymore. I think that's what I call it. So, all right, let me let these go for just a second, and I'm going to flip them over. All right, it's only been about five minutes. And you know what I did is I took that stone plate that's in the middle part way up. That was a trick to take this grate off and then turn that. Oh, look at the nice grill marks. That looks wonderful. Lay this up here. And again, I'm going to do barbecue on the front too. And it's going to get a little bit mingled because I'm using the same basting brush to hit the back ones with that marinade. You might want to try the same thing on yours. And these will only take another couple of minutes on the back side to get ready to go on our burgers. And then I'm going to show you one other twist that they do with their Memphis style barbecue bologna. It's right inside. That's where I'm going to take you in just a second. I'll have these off in just a minute. Well, we're back in from the grill, and I hope this is in frame because Sheila had to go down to her ma's today. So we actually did the first part of this recipe yesterday. She was here, and the brine is a, like a 24-hour process, so I took it out today to grill it, but she wasn't here. So let's get started anyway. Hope I'm doing the right thing, Sheila. Look at these nice grilled buns. And over here, the one in the front has marinade on it. The one in the back has barbecue sauce on it. Now are you ready for this? This is what they do down there for that Memphis style. Is they top it with coleslaw. Now you can do yours any way you want. But you remember the Dumas Walker song, don't you? Down to Dumas Walkers, I want a slaw burger fries and a bottle of ski. That's a southern thing, man. They put slaw on a lot of their burgers, so we're going to do this just to replicate the Memphis madness with all this delicious flavor. And by the way, over here we got some little cubed up little appetizers in the middle. I might chill these and have some cold bologna, even though it's cooked. And then these in the front, they got to go on the next set of buns, and that's it. Let me see, Sheila would say, show it to them because they look so good. There that is. Isn't that wonderful? Awesome. I hope I'm doing good, Sheila. There you have it. Memphis-style barbecued bologna with slaw. Outstanding stuff. I hope you enjoyed this recipe. you got to give it a try. And we really hope you subscribe to our channel right over here. Little Shotgun Red's face will pop up in just a minute or so, if it hasn't already. We'll put another recipe over here. And I think what I'm going to put over here is our secret barbecue sauce. So you can make that as well. Sheila? Is this the best slaw burger fries and a bottle of ski barbecued Memphis style <laughs> bologna I ever made without your help? I wish you were here so you could try this. If it ain't, it ought to be. We'll see you next time right here on Cooking with Shotgun Red. Bye, Sheila. I think I heard her say bye back. Bye-bye.